combining the blues thing with what you were doing, is it also addressing the, the tones? Is it also addressing the the, the, the the pick attack and the settings on the marshals and uh, different... Well, the, the biggest challenge is being able to stop, which is the same challenge I had when I was 11 years old. You know, <laughs> can you stop? And, and before I would solve it with, with fast volume control work. But now, you know, if I've, if I've got a, a solo and I, and I want to stop, I might actually consider turning the distortion to the point where I can even leave the volume up, as crazy as that sounds. Wow. And, you know, you know the, the level we're at now in this room, it's not a realistic volume level. No. This is, you know, you've got to be drum set level to really get it, get it, uh, get it working. But uh, that's the thing, the, the, the gear and the settings that I'll use for playing with a drummer it's like a whole different world than, than sitting around, you know, playing in your bedroom. Um, and that's uh, a lot of what's in my hands has come from that, because I spent an enormous amount of time playing with, with drummers when I was a kid. Uh, but, but now I think the difference is, you know, to turn it back enough where I can go... Uh. It's, it's so much fun doing a lick that stops like that. breath in there. That's incredible. So, 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 the, so you could never do that before, like in the Race Rex days, it'd be, you know, that, 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 you know, just be screaming, howling. So that's the whole trick, not, not that to trick, but be able to play that at stage volume and, and have that control. Yeah. And then I've got enough fuzz pedals where if I suddenly need to, you know, do something that requires the distortion, and that would be, you know, a, a lot of, a big part of my playing is using hammer-ons and pull-offs in conjunction with picking to get fast stuff. So if, if I want to do, uh, now it's not all picked, and and to make the hammer and pull offs as loud as the pick note, so it comes across, distortion really helps for that. I mean, I'm you know I try to get my left hand strong as well, you know, with a clean sound. And it still comes out, but it's not as it's not working like it did with all the distortion. So for that, I've got a pedal, and and, and I'm you know I'm not going to stop while that's happening. So that's that's the nice thing about having you know more than more than one uh, distortion pedal. Interesting, because we actually talked a while ago, in fact, for the the Fuzz Universe record, and you actually said to me, "I want to achieve a balance between clarity and excitement." You know, having a lot of distortion or or fuzz adds a lot of harmonic excitement to the sound, but I have to play very accurately, or the string noise will become a mess. So this has obviously been a prevailing philosophy of yours from from the well, get go. Well, on the uh, for example, the, the online school that I'm, I've been teaching at for the last three years has allowed me to really listen to, you know, up-and-coming rock guitar players. And, uh, you know, I've given thousands of lessons. And if I've learned anything from it as a teacher, it's been that the challenge of rock guitar is to play one note and control the other five strings. And a lot of it is in the left hand. You know, being able to use your thumb to mute. And, and I, you know, if I had a slogan you know, that I put on a t-shirt, it would be, everything cool that happens on guitar happens because of the thumb hanging over the top. <laughs> what was the, uh, the reason for wanting to do the uh, online rock guitar school? You know, I, it's fine. I never really set out to be a teacher, but teaching has just, like, stuck to me like Velcro. It, it's, mm -hmm. Ever since I was a kid, people always came up to me and asked for guitar lessons. And uh, I remember when I, when I went to MI, you know, I moved out to California from the little town of Pennsylvania, and I thought, man, I got to stay out here. You know, this is this, the scene is here. I, I really got to stay. And I, I, and I wasn't in a band that was making any money yet, so I thought I'll ask to see if they'll let me teach at GIT after I graduated. And uh, before I could ask, they asked me. Wow. And you know, the, the instructional video people came. You know, hey, we'll give you an advance if you do it. Well, okay. You know, and uh, in this school again, they they contacted me. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, I, I'm, I want to be a rock star. I'm not a teacher, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I, I really enjoy it. And it, uh, it's, it's really inspiring. It, it allows me again to, to see so many guitar players of, of different levels. And, I, you know, I absolutely learn as much from the beginners as I do from the advanced guys. <laughs> and, uh, and they challenge me too. You know, I mean, sometimes the, you know, advanced guys will send something in and it'll be like, I don't know. 
I don't know what to do there, and I got to research. And I'm always, you know, just, uh, it, it really makes me know myself. Because, again, a lot of times I have to figure out, like, they're playing the right note, they're, you know, they're playing the right rhythm, you know, but it still doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. And I got to figure out why that is and, and, and help them with it. I mean, do, do you come across some really good guitar players? Absolutely. I mean, like, shockingly good guys? I mean, guys with the character and guys who, who might be able to go on and, and do yeah, sure. thing? Yeah, that's great. And, uh, and, and uh, although I must admit, a lot of times my favorite is sort of the beginners because they improve so quickly. You know, the, if you get an advanced guy, even if you show them a lot of stuff, they get their thing together. You yeah. know, they're, they're just, you know, adding on vocabulary to, to a language they can already speak. Right. But uh, it's really nice to be able to steer somebody away from all the mis horrible mistakes that, that I went through. You know, like we were talking earlier, I, the first two years I played guitar, I only played upstrokes on one string. <laughs> and in a way, that was great because I got really good at upstrokes and yeah, I got yeah. really uh, knowledgeable about the one string. And man, my second finger, which was the only finger I used, I got really had a lot of dexterity with that finger. <laughs> and uh, it was it's nice to start from a place of strength, even though it's, it's even though it was primitive. You know, I was at a professional level at 11 years old with one finger upstrokes and in one string. You know, I don't think there's anybody who could, you know, match me at that at that weird little niche of guitar. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, there are a lot of people who did downstrokes better than I did and <laughs> used the other fingers, and I, I didn't know what a chord was, but, uh, but I had one thing down really well. And to have that feeling of, like, being able to play something simple really well, yeah, yeah. that's a rough, that's a hard mental thing for, for, I think, any musician to do. Because we all want to show off what we can do. We want to say, look at this complicated thing. I remember when I first started studying Japanese, I thought, you know, I want to learn, like, a really complicated paragraph, so I can just blow people away. <laughs> You know, I want to understand what I'm saying, and so as a teacher, that's that's a really big challenge because everybody, just about, you know, they want to show like, look at this complicated thing I learned. Yeah. You know, I learned a dream theater song, and it's like, man, how about Louie Louie? You know, <laughs> let's play Louie Louie. <laughs> let's play it so we can do it with our eyes closed, our foot stomping, you know, with any kind of tone. Let's get that thing down, you know, and and then. We'll, we'll move on, you know, maybe we'll do paperback writer. You know, we'll get that down so we can just play it without thinking about it, you know, roll out of bed. And, you know, or, you know, or a bend, you know, we want to be able to not even worry about it. You know, just enjoy it and, just, and not have to like, you know, we'll wait, you know, take 17. You know, is that it? You know, no, you, you got to get it in your ears. And then, you know, we'll get to the Dream Theater song, you know, but, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd much rather have a good hamburger than a bad lobster. <laughs> I gotcha. I copied down uh, some of the names of, of some of the fundamentals that you teach. Yeah. So if, could we maybe go through a few of these and just have you kind of show us a few of these things real quickly? Well, sure, but, uh, you know, if it's, if it's like patented school stuff, I can't give, I can't give away the specifics, but let well, me know okay. what you're well, I mean, I mean, the first one, I mean, it's just strumming accuracy, which is kind of what you've talked about before. Well, strumming, st strumming is something I wish more people would do, for no other reason than it's fun. I mean, I remember, t to me, after playing only upstrokes for, for two years, mm -hmm. when, on one string, when I first learned a chord, I think the first song I learned was Rocky Raccoon of the Beatles. <laughs> And it sounded like the record, which <laughs> blew me away. Because nothing I did before that sounded like the record. Everything sounded like a you know a lame version of of sort of the record. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm playing. You know, was it? Uh, I'm playing Beatles songs, and they sound like 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 the recording, which was the most exciting thing in the world. I was I loved chords, and I you know the first band I was in I was 11 years old. And uh, I'm playing, you know, rain when the rain Now the funny thing is, after teaching guitar for three years in the online school, I realized that I play the G chord completely wrong. No kidding. It sounds good. You know, I make my I make a good sounding G chord. But look at this crazy thing. I, I use my pinky for the top two notes and my third finger for the bottom note. And here's something everybody does, but nobody realizes. 
Nobody who plays a good G chord plays the B. We mute it out. <laughs> it sounds better if it's not there. Even though it's a correct note, yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds better without that. Because it just clouds it up. It's, it's like having the third, that low on the voicing. It's no good. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and I got that from Rocky Raccoon, because Rocky Raccoon had the G7 with this finger here. So when I learned the real G, I just did that, and then my, you know, I found it sounded better with the D in there. And I didn't even know I wasn't playing the B until I heard people doing it. It's like, something sounds wrong. Like, oh, mute that thing out. It's not being played. And there's like three other G chords. You can do the thumb on the first finger. You can, this is the one everybody else does. Or you yeah, can yeah. bar the third finger. So I, I actually, I, I dread teaching the G chord because it's so complicated. Because I really feel like everybody should know the options. It's like, you know, I, I, I'm like, I'm so sorry that there's, this is, you know, going to be more complicated than it should be. But there's like, and of course, then there's the, the bar chord, the, the power chord. Interesting. But that's the art. Absolutely. So, so, so strumming accuracy really is just a function of oh, playing no. a lot of rhythm guitar. I, I mean, I, I just think a lot of guitar players tend to overlook that part of it. Well, the other thing with strumming is, is of course, the, the, that, that was, that's the chord I got off the subject of. But um, strumming is, is, is being able to have a good rhythm, you know, and, uh, and just that having that up and down, like a drummer has right and left. And to be able to feel where your syncopations are, you know, if you have, uh, like, what would be an example? Um, if you, you know, if you get your foot going on the downbeat and you listen to where those chords are, up. If you know, if I'm doing right, left, right, left, it'd be all lefts. Left, 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 left. Left, left, which is the same thing if you go down, down, up, 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 up. Now that's slow enough. You know, there's a lot of space there. You're not playing like shred. Yeah, yeah. So there's enough space where that will work. But you're not going to feel it the same way as, as if you had that rhythmic grid. If you, watch Keith, if you watch Keith Richards, you know, he's going to have that this going the whole time. Yeah. So he's not going like, you know, that's, it just, you just don't feel it. And when your body is moving like this, then, you, then you, the, the groove is there. And so much of it is about the foot stomp and the, and the, the shoulders and the head. And, and when you see a guitar player is playing like this, it's just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to help you. <laughs> it's music. <laughs> you are blessed with ridiculously large hands. I'm, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a yeah. few people with hands like that. Eddie Van Halen has remarkable hands. Steve Vai has unbelievable hands. And Jeff Beck has amazing hands. Yeah. So there's obviously something to be said about well, big I, th hands. I think when, when people think about what you can do with, with big hands, they think this way. Yeah. Which is nice. I mean, you can, you can hit, you know, that, that thing I did before, that's, that would be hard to do. If I had to do that in F down here, it's not going to fly. <laughs> so, um, and of course, the way the guitar is laid out, the frets get closer together as you get higher. So, you know, a, a lick that, that I do in E, somebody with smaller hands might be able to do it. In G, so it's not like right. all off limits. Or you right. can you can buy a Fender Mustang, you know, or a, or an, or an Ibanez Micro. If that's what, they right. make guitars with, with that are closer together. Yeah, yeah. To me, the really important thing about the hand size and the guitar neck size is not this way, but this way, because everything cool that happens on guitar happens with the thumb hang, hanging mm -hmm. over the neck. Being able to mute. <laughs> Without having to go, you know, be careful. You know, yeah. that's that's all happening from muting. Yeah. And the vibrato, and having the, the thumb there. And when you see some, you know, even you see somebody like Paul McCartney, who's not considered to be a technical player, mm -hmm. when he's playing his D chord, his, his thumb is he's a master thumb muter. You know, because you don't want those bottom two notes. So, you know, pull up, we can work it out, and you'll see some amazing yeah. thumb muting from Paul McCartney and all those guys. You, you look at the old John Lennon stuff, or, yeah. you know, or uh, Pete Townsend. 
and you know, I, I've got a, a student who's the perfect storm of small hands. She's 10 years old. It's, it's a girl and she's Japanese. I've met her. She's about this tall. Mm -hmm. And she absolutely has a fantastic sense of music. She's got, she's an amazing player. She's all over YouTube. She, you know, she, she does like Racer X songs and Guthrie Govan songs. Wow. She rips. But me as her teacher, I'm, I'm, it, it really, the main thing I want is for her to get her thumb over the neck. And she just can't do it yet because her hands are so small. And so I'm finding things for her to work on in the meantime. Because she, you know, she's going to grow. You know, when she when she's twelve, you know, it's not going to be an issue. She, her, she'll she'll grow. You know, she'll sprout up, and suddenly her thumb will be over the neck. Yeah. yeah. And her ear is good enough where she makes stuff work. Like I gave her that, you know, Lenny Kravitz, the, <laughs> which to me just you got to have the thumb, and she managed to do it like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm I'm just trying every way. Last, you know, I'm giving her you know all these you know songs that have thumb chords and and. You know, she's managing to do, you know, you know, a major seventh that way instead of this way. And, <laughs> and, and again, she's absolutely great. And, and it always, she always, you know, squeezes the sound out of the guitar, which is really the important thing. But it just made me realize how, how at least to what I, the kind of guitar playing I like, man, that thumb's got to be over the top. And, uh, and having big hands is helpful to do that. And to me, that's much more significant than, than, than stretching stuff. Interesting. You bring up Racer X. I mean, back in the day, Paul, I mean, was the, was the thumb over the top for the doing Ab Racer X stuff? Absolutely. I mean, there, there, are, there are exceptions. I mean, if you play a, a you know, a, a, what do you call it, a, a bar chord, right. you, know, you can't do that. Right. No, of course. And I remember that there was a lick, again, certain things where you've got a bar. I'd, I'd figured out the limb lays down on Broadway by Genesis. The keyboard part was like... <laughs> I, can't I forgot it now, but th just this lick up by itself. Yeah. There was no way I could play that and not bar, and so yeah, that would just be painful. And there's certain things that are just such a big stretch. I keep playing that lick. What you know, maybe do major. Or, for that, I mean, it's actually still kind of up there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, if it's if I tried to do Ice Cream Man or something, what is the? Uh... Yeah, I didn't play that since I was twelve, but the um, <laughs> you know the, the thumb was kind of there. It's as up as you can have it. You know, there's certain things where you have to stretch out or bar where you can't. But for the most part, you know, ninety-eight percent of the time. I've, I've got that thumb hanging over, That's and you can get notes too. Obviously, you can get you know, or you know, things with uh, where you actually, you know, if I play a Beach Boys song. I may not always love you, as long as there are stars above you. You never need to doubt it. I'll make you so sure about it. God only knows. So you know. Whether it's metal or whether it's pop, kind of the thumb. Whether you're just imitating the Fonz going, hey! 